Coming up on today's Airborne, Textron Aviation initiates workforce reductions. Augusta Westland completes its AW609 auto rotation trials. And Arcturus unveils jump fixed wing VTOL UAV. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Approximately 750 workers are being laid off by Textron Aviation across the Cessna and Beechcraft divisions, but the announcement was not a surprise. The 60-day notices that went out the middle of last week were reportedly in line with or lower than the expected job cuts at the Textron subsidiaries. The Wichita Eagle reports that the layoffs affect salaried and hourly workers in management and non-management positions. About 575 of those laid off were from the Kansas facilities. Teal Group aviation analyst Richard Abalafia told the paper that the level of layoffs announced is not unreasonable for a scenario when two healthy companies with full staffs merge, but that doesn't mean it won't be painful. Most of those laid off will continue to be paid for two months. But as Textron shrinks its workforce, Spirit Aerosystems in Wichita is hiring. The company says it's looking to fill some 250 positions in the city. Auto rotation trials for the AW609 Tilt Rotor program have been completed successfully, according to Augusta Westland. Between the end of March and into April, Flight testing included more than 70 power-off conversions from airplane mode to helicopter mode. The tests were flown under auspices of the FAA and covered the full windmilling and auto-rotation envelopes. The handling qualities of the aircraft were benign throughout the testing, and the performance of the aircraft exceeded expected characteristics seen during preparation in the engineering simulator. Together, the test pilots and engineers were able to develop the best flight maneuvers that will ultimately allow training of commercial pilots in the planned full flight simulator. The concurrent industrialization phase of the AW609 is also taking shape across the Augusta Westland network and associated supply chain, with new equipment and tooling being acquired to guarantee existing orders can start to be fulfilled immediately after FAA type certification. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Arcturus UAVs have unveiled a new vertical and takeoff and landing system for their T-20 and T-16 fixed-wing UAVs. Dubbed Jump, the system consists of booms fitted with vertical lift motors and rotors that are mounted to each wing to provide vertical lift for takeoff and landing. Vertical lift motors are shut off for winged flight and propellers are feathered for minimum drag. Seamless transition to wing flight is achieved by the Piccolo Autopilot using Latitude Engineering's hybrid quad rotor technology. All flight control is fully autonomous. Arcturus Jump has all the versatility of a quad rotor while retaining the superior range and endurance of a fixed wing. 
Jump fitted Arcturus air vehicles require no special launch equipment and do not require runways for launch or landing. DeMilo Hollerberg, president of Arcturus UAV, said, quote, Jump makes exciting UAV technology much more useful, end quote. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Here's a video that'll put a smile on your face. Sit back, relax, and turn up the volume. And enjoy your flight. Search Craig Newman Afternoon 2 on YouTube. The successful first public flight of the electric E-Fan experimental aircraft was the highlight of Airbus Group's E-Aircraft Day in Bordeaux, France. The electric E-Fan training aircraft is an innovative technology experimental demonstrator based on all composite construction. Airbus Group and its partners are aiming to perform research and development to construct versions of the E-Fan to include two-place and four-place airplanes. This E-Fan demonstrator is an all-electric aircraft, but development is underway on hybrid versions using a fuel-burning engine to charge the batteries. According to the Airbus website, Airbus's interest in small hybrid planes is that the technology may someday be expanded into a regional-type airliner. Airbus Group Chief Technical Officer Jean Boddy said, quote, The EFAN project and Airbus Group's commitment to the field of electric and hybrid research show our vision of future technological developments, end quote. Airborne's brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Welcome back. SpaceX got some good news and some bad news from the test of a booster designed to be reusable following its most recent Dragon launch. The good news was that the booster made a soft landing in the Atlantic Ocean. Had it been recoverable, it could have potentially flown again. The bad news is severe weather in the landing area destroyed the booster before it could be recovered. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said that the telemetry received from the booster confirmed that it had made the soft landing and was, quote, in a healthy condition after that. But the booster was, quote, subsequently destroyed by wave action, end quote and there was not a vessel or captain willing to go out to try to retrieve it. Musk said the company's long-range plans are to have boosters land back on solid ground, where it's much more likely to be recovered. The Sunseeker Duo airplane made its first powered flight last week at Solar Flight's test facility in Voghera, Italy. On their blog, Solar Flight said that they have been making adjustments to the airplane over the past four months. During the initial unpowered flights, there was some instability in pitch noted by the pilot. They have since increased the size of the horizontal stabilizer and added solar cells to the airfoil. The site reports that now the airplane is docile with good control authority in the air and on the ground. The team also looked at the performance of the battery system, motor, propeller, and landing gear retraction systems, and it made improvements to each of these. Solar Flight reports that the airplane now has enough excess power to carry a passenger and baggage. 
Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Aeroborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.